the bottom half out of control and commits the foul. And credit Starwood, he saw it coming. He just steps right outside, made sure he was outside of the arc, takes the body and, and gets the charge call for his team. Looking, looking to add to this 9-5 lead will be William Carey. Tristan Stevens in the game now, as, along with Muhammad Gilchrist for Florida Memorial. Starwood with the ball, back over to Cazaniza. There's Whitworth, and a foul call, and pass thrown to Starwood, and they'll say Stevens got underneath him. Scoring's kind of been all over the place a little bit for Florida Memorial in this tournament. Mubashar Ali had 10 points, 10 boards in the first game. There's Starwood down on the baseline, turn around right hand, won't drop, and now does. Quincy Urbina had 14 points in game one. Aubrey Washington had 22. Those were the three in double figures. Yesterday, it was Urbina, Shake, Kibi, and Sam Mack all in double figures. So this is a group that in Florida Memorial that runs a lot of minutes for a lot of players. Yeah, we saw him against Faulkner last night, sub in, do line changes, right. five in, five out several times over the course of the game as Mubashar Ali lays it up and in. Looked almost like church league. You run five in, five off. Yeah. 11-7 your score, 15-41 to go in the opening half. We'll get another foul. They're going to get that one on Aubrey Washington. That is already the fifth team foul on Florida Memorial. And we're at the 1541 mark of the first half. No fouls yet on William Carey. Ball thrown in underneath. Looking for help. Gets it into Starwood. Starwood, mid range baseline jumper, won't drop. Rebound fought for out of bounds off Carey, Florida Memorial basketball. The point guard, Dejan Whitworth, getting in there, mixing up a little bit with the bigs, trying to. Nab that offensive rebound. Nearly had it. He did. Aubrey Washington into the front court now. Senior out of Jacksonville, Florida. Working around to the right. Back left. Switches it over to Mubashar Ali. Throws it down with the right hand. 11-9 the advantage for William Carey as they got the ball going the other way. Dejan Whitworth didn't go off that screen, and now the spacing's a little off, but there's Arkeishis Martin, left hand won't drop. Mubashar Ali rips down the board. Aubrey Washington coming across the timeline with it. Face up with Starwood. He'll go, go around and pull it near the elbow, won't drop. Whitworth, long rebound. Dribbles it out, goes right around. Stevens has it poked out by Aubrey Washington on the help defense. Back over, right wing, now into the corner. Gilchrist, three, no good. Yep, nope. He missed it, made it, missed it, all in one shot. And Whitworth grabs the board, and he'll go the other way. 11-9, 14-37 to go in the half. That one, I think, went off his foot. Stevens going the other way with it. Floyd will stop ball. Shoulder into Floyd, no call. Now sends it over to Gilchrist. Up top, corralled by Sheik Kibi. Kibi calls for the screen from Mubashar Ali. Back to Mubashar Ali, and he is fouled on the dunk attempt. That's not a bad foul. No, that's a really good foul. You'd rather do that than him get the easy one. Good job rotating by Zakisius Martin. He was a little late, but if you're going to be late, you might as well get the foul and make him earn it. And as you noted last night, getting that foul in a way that Ali can't finish the play, he made sure of that, but he still didn't get him with the flagrant. Yeah. So a lot of times you'll see players, it's either a flagrant or not enough. You can foul hard and keep them from not making the basket without committing a flagrant foul. It's, it's In the heat of the moment, it may be difficult, but when you really think about what the process is, it's not a, a huge deal. Try to get the ball low to keep him from even getting it up above his head or to his head. That's a hard thing to do with Mubashar Ali, seven-foot center out of Helsinki, Finland. But you see that a lot of times out of bigs that a, a seven-foot guy, they'll feed him the ball low, which makes low. him the same size as anybody yep. else. But. So far today, Florida Memorial, the passes have been high at the rim, and Ali's the only one with a chance at it. And also they, they feed it down low on a bounce pass, but also you'll see a lot of those big guys, they'll take the ball and they'll put it right down toward their knees. Yeah. And that's, that's free-range ball right there. That's, right. that's anybody's. 
Ball sent over to Starwood. Turnaround jumper, good for Maxwell Starwood. Puts William Carey back on top, 13-11. Just under 14 to go here in the half. Coming across the timeline, Terrence Clayton with the basketball. Gets it back over to the elbow. Down on the block, spins, looking for a shot. Kicks it out, 16 to shoot. Drive, kick, catch, shoot, no good. Rebound tipped alive, Kazaniza gets it. He'll lead the break the other way. Looking for help, gets it over. Now back to Starwood. There's Jonathan Floyd, wide open three. Count it for Jonathan Floyd as he was left all alone on that wing and the Gulfport, Mississippi native puts it through. And a good and selfish play by Starwood. He could have taken that shot. He was open. He was, would have been somewhat contested, but kicks it down to the baseline where he has nobody around him. There's a three off the hand of Terrence Clayton, the Dothan, Alabama native answers. Coming the other way, Florida Memorial all calling for a walk. They didn't get it. Right wing, Floyd bounce pass over. Looking for help, the drive, Kazaniz uh, can't get it to go. He's fouled, that's the sixth foul of the half against Florida Memorial. This one will be on Shake Kibi. Shooting foul sends Kazaniz to the line. Freshman, native of Kigali, Rwanda. And we've looked at Kazaniza over the course of the weekend. Obviously very raw talent, and you expect that from a freshman. But, David, we've been impressed with him. He can affect the game in a lot of ways on both ends of the floor. Yeah, he's long, he's athletic. He can play out on the wing. They've played him in the post, done a little bit of everything with him. And you know if a freshman is going to be out there putting in the minutes that he is for a, a coach of the stature of Coach Knight down there, it's going to be – there's a reason he's playing. Yeah, for sure. 17-14 is your score. 12-58 remaining in the half as Kazaniza hit one of those two free throws. Shake Kibi tips it back over to Terrence Clayton. We'll bring it across the timeline. Defended face up by Sean Moore. Now poked free and Stevens will regather. Moore defended by bumpers and a foul call. They're going to get bumpers on the reach. And William Carey's being really aggressive here defensively. I almost wonder if they're being a little too aggressive in the passing lanes, allowing the Florida Memorial player to possibly beat them when they miss that pass deflection. Ball working over to the left now in the hand of Gilchrist. Stevens, right elbow, pulls it. Good. 17-16 the score. Crusaders up with the ball. Going the other way with it. There's Sean Moore, nearly has it picked. Got to get across the timeline and does. Now right at the rim, kicks it. Three, no good from Javari Thigpen. Stevens the board underneath, coming the other way. Sends it over right side. The attack leaves it. Left hand won't drop. Kicked around. Pulled down by bumpers. Bumpers. Pushes. Had a man wide open on the left wing. Didn't take it, took it all the way to the basket himself. 19-16 lead, William Carey. Tough shot, bumpers. Seems to be a player on this William Carey team that likes to be abrasive and kind of get guys going. Down on the left block, gets it out of there. There's the three, won't go. Gilchrist, they'll call him for the travel. Tough spot for Gilchrist, didn't really have space to land. Yeah. That is a the under-12 media timeout. We'll take it with them. 19-16, William Carey leads, 11.34 to go. First half, Faulkner Sports Network. Connections matter now more than ever. At Guardian Credit Union, we live to make connections, to provide hope, to strengthen our communities, to create stronger financial future. These connections happen in our credit union, in serving our communities, and even in the small moments of sharing a bench with a neighbor. Connect to your goals. Connect to your community. Connect with Guardian.
19, 16 your score, 11, 34 to go, first half. William Carey with the lead and the ball. Into the front court, Whitworth. Sends it over, left wing, now back. Whitworth finds thick pin into the corner. Starwood, three, in and out, and down again. Maxwell Starwood has been really good all weekend long. And David, as you see these Crusaders start to get more games under their belt, you gotta feel like Starwood's gonna could potentially be an all-conference level player for them. Yeah, it's cer he's certainly starting out the season in that manner, and we've seen it this weekend. Again, another one of those guys that they're allowed to do a little bit of everything. They start him out in the post. He's out there on the wing shooting threes, and he's got the talent to be able to sit out there and do all of that stuff. So let him do it. Yeah, Baton Rouge native is a transfer of, from Southeastern Louisiana University. And he has... Made an impact for him this weekend. And one of the things as we talk about him, and you and I see the SSAC a lot because we broadcast Faulkner games, not a lot of teams in the SSAC on the men's side as Mubashar Ali drains that three from the left wing. Not a lot of SSAC teams on the men's side have your traditional post players. They're all very, very quick. So if you got a five-man, he's got to be able to move and, and do multiple things, and Starwood's that kind of player. He is, and... He can create a lot of problems because he's quick, but he's also broad-shouldered, yeah. big body down there in the post. So he can do a lot of banging in the post and, and making those difficult baskets on the block and, and getting the hard rebounds and all of those things for you. To the line goes Zarkeesius Martin. Martin, free throw up and good. He's a native of Macomb, Mississippi. A lot of Mississippi guys on this on this William Carey roster, as expected. They do a really good job of recruiting the top and bottom of that state. Bumpers the steal, feeds it. Right hand layup won't go. Bumpers tips the rebound out. Back over. Whitworth. Bumpers. Thought about it. Now step back. Three. Good from Savion Bumpers. 25-19 is the score. As the man from Quitman, Mississippi, puts that one through. Deshaun Bullock can deal with Quitman. That's North Mississippi, our producer. Not real fond of a lot of the, su of the Southern Mississippi guys. Deshaun's from Hernando, Mississippi. Rebound coming the other way. Chase down by Starwood. Throws it out. Bumpers across the timeline. Back over to Whitworth. Splits around one defender. Goes up right nice. hand good. To our South Mississippi folks, don't worry. Deshaun's just jealous. He don't know about that salt life. Down around Gulfport and Moss Point, it's just not his thing. 28-19, 9.39 to go here in the first half. Timeout taken. It is a full timeout. We come back. Nine-point advantage for William Carey, Faulkner Sports Network. I don't know if there is anything I like better than good barbecue. Full Moon has the best barbecue and best smoked wings in town, and those onion rings are out of this world. Go buy after the game and use your ticket for a buy one get one free barbecue sandwich. Say hi to Chris in person at 7660 East Chase Parkway, or give him a call at 334-676-5999. Twenty-eight, nineteen. William Carey leads Florida Memorial. Nine thirty-nine to go. Opening half. Nice run here for the Crusaders. Been pretty tenacious defensively. Eleven to six is the advantage on the boards. You take a look at that that field goal percentage: sixty-two and a half percent from the floor, almost sixty-seven percent from three. It's it's really hard to beat anybody when they're shooting like that. Terrence Clayton with the basketball. Works left. Looking for help. 
Back around the screen from Shake Kibi. Kibi to Washington. Works left, pulls it, free throw line, rattles around good. 28-21, the lead for William Carey. They go the other way with it. Whitworth with the basketball. Bounce pass, bumpers into the corner. Washington meets him. Gets it out of there, throws it away. Kazaniza. So seven-point advantage right now for William Carey as they look for a stop. Florida Memorial trying to climb out of this hole, make it a one-possession game if they can over the next couple of possessions. All the way in, that one's deflected by Kazaniza. We'll stay with Florida Memorial. And we've seen this out of Florida Memorial the week, over the weekend, David, and, and again, this could be the product of early in the year, despite the fact that it's late November. Not a lot of games because of COVID issues at various places. And, Florida Memorial very much looks like a team that's still kind of trying to identify what that rotation's going to be as Mike puts that one through. Yeah, we've seen him use a couple of different starting rotations here just over the course of this weekend. So, And it may be they match up by the opponent rather than just running the same five guys out there every time. Whitworth gets his own board, feeds, Kazaniza, layup, left hand good. Yeah, and it could be, and I, but I think some of that, you know, early in the year you're looking for stuff, you you're tinkering, and sometimes – that can bog your offense down a little bit because the chemistry's not quite there yet. Yeah, and a, and a lot of time these coaching staffs, they're doing all the tinkering until you get to conference play. Right. And a charge called on Urbina. They'll say Thigpen got there in time, showed the deed to the property, and took the charge. 30 to 23. He was almost there too long. He started to move. <laughs> he had been yeah. standing there for a good second or so. 30-23 the score. 8-13 remaining opening half. We get the floor taken care of on this end. Excellent job by our own T.J. Boykin. Whitworth, across the timeline, hits bumpers in the corner. Bumpers, ball fake, shoots the three anyway. Savion Bumpers found, has found it early here today. Ten-point lead for the Crusaders. Working left, now down to the corner to Terrence Clayton. Back up to Mack, pulls that three. No good, Thigpen clears the board, hands it off to Whitworth. Whitworth, across the timeline, finds Jonathan Floyd. He'll shoot one and it goes through. 36-23 is the William Carey lead. Whitworth deflects it, still batted around. Shake Kibi runs it down. Kibi. High thick pin, nearly loses it. Mack gathers up, blocked from behind by Kazaniza. Now throws it over Shake Kibi, and it's a turnover. William Carey threatening to run away with this thing right now with the defensive pressure combined with the shooting. Yeah, they are. Strong defensive pressure from uh, Kibi there is, or not Kibi, but uh, Kazaniza. Yeah. As he had long arms, used them on that play. Maxwell Starwood back in the game for William Carey. Kazaniza, along with Whitworth, Thigpen, and Floyd. Considerable size advantage across the board right now as Thigpen and Starwood are combined in the post for William Carey. And Kazaniza functionally moves to the three. And then you got that quick guard combo of Floyd and Whitworth. This yeah. will be an interesting lineup to watch. It will be. And we've got a foul on Urbina. That's his second. That'll put Whitworth on the free throw line. Already a quick start for Whitworth today as he's sitting at five points, three rebounds, and three assists. Been active in every phase of the game. Yeah. Even defensively, he's hounding the guards up for this Florida Memorial team. Urbana off, Muhammad Gilchrist on for the Lions. Free throw will come from Whitworth momentarily. Up and good for the Gulfport native. Kapaya Lincoln Community College transfer. Next one up 
from Whitworth. Makes it a 15-point lead for the Crusaders, largest of the day for either team. Now into the front court with the ball, Murad Berrien. Defended by Whitworth, gets it to Shake Kiwi, defended by Starwood. Right side, Stevens. Working around, looks for help. There's Kiwi into the corner. Gilchrist fresh off the deck. There's Stevens, pulls it, free throw line, good. Tristan Stevens, nice shot there. Going the other way is Whitworth. No hurry right now. A little under six and a half to go in the half. Drive, left hand, blocked by Shake Kiby. Whitworth caught it himself, landed out of bounds. Thirty-eight twenty-five is your score. Murad Berrien runs point. And Kiby down low defensively, no small man himself, six foot nine. Hands it off to Gilchrist. Back over to Stevens. There's Kiby up top. Left wing, around the screen, feeds, drives, right hand layup, good. Off the hand of Corin Bradley. First time all weekend we've called his name. Native of Gainesville, Florida. Whitworth working against Berrien. They're going to call Berrien for the foul. 11-point lead for William Carey as we go to the under six media timeout. Double bonus time when we come back. Faulkner Sports Network. P Automotive is family owned and in the same location since 1985. We strive to be your one-stop shop for all your auto needs. You don't have to spend big money for a nice car. Our prices start at $3,995. We have several lenders and in-house financing available. Visit us online at anpautomotive.com. Thirty-eight twenty-seven. your score here. William Carey goes to the line looking for more as they are now in the double bonus. Whitworth, the man to the line. Seven points already in the first half for Dejon Whitworth, who by average is the leading scorer on this team right now. 15 points a game over four contests, despite only starting two. Maxwell Starwood, by total points, is the leader. He's got 64 points, averaging 12.8 per game over five games, five starts. Whitworth made the first, missed the second. 12-point advantage. Coming the other way. There's the drive. Bradley's layup won't go. Kazaniza clears it. Back over to Starwood. Whitworth, or rather Floyd, around, kicks. And travel. And travel. Dave, you take a look at these rebounding numbers right now. Still a plus five for William Carey, but the shooting, 62% from the field, 75% from three. It's going to be hard for Florida Memorial to close the gap if they can't get some stops. Yeah, and you've got to think they're not going to shoot that throughout the course of a ball game, but they've gotten some good open looks and rhythm for William Carey on the offensive end as that three is put up and missed by Guillory. And Kazaniza had it in his hands and dropped it. Goes out of bounds, so Florida Memorial will get a, another look at it. 11 seconds on the shot clock as it didn't hit the rim. Sends it up high. Guillory. 
Kibi. Kibi looking for help. Sends it over. Bradley falls down, and that's a travel. Hit the deck as he turned the corner down there. That's going to get our mop crew back at it again. Bumpers will throw it in momentarily. Big shout out to our guys, Devin Trawick and TJ Boykin, who have been on the mop for every game of this tournament on a humid, rainy weekend and where the floor is yeah. sweating a little bit. Said, Boy, have they been on the mop. Yeah, they have really. Cross the timeline, Whitworth. Back over to Starwood. Starwood to Kazaniza. Puts it on the deck, looks for help, leaves it over for Floyd. Floyd, 12 to shoot, drives, passes, Kazaniza, three, won't go. Starwood rebounds it, and now batted out of bounds as he tried to fire it back in to Whitworth. Active hands for Starwood through that sequence. Yeah, and Florida Memorial switched to a man defense here out of that zone, and they've looked a little better here as – Floyd draws some contact, no call, but he gets it to drop. Just good attack on Floyd. Got the shoulder by the shoulder of his defender. Takes it right to the basket. Yeah, we've talked about that a little bit this weekend, too, for some of these players. You can really tell, and we looked at, at Jordan Booker for Thomas, the same kind of thing. You, you see some guards that will get kind of that half step and then hook. But then you see some of these guys like Booker and Whitworth and Floyd who get that half step and get the shoulder tucked inside and yeah. don't hook and get right by their defender. And that's the really the quicker way to do it. If you can just tuck that shoulder in, you put your defender more on your back, it gives you that much more room to get up and down the floor. That is bumpers off the feed from Floyd, won't drop. Kazaniza, rebound put back good. The foul on the other end, though, was on Jonathan Floyd. I missed that call for you. I apologize. 16-point advantage right now for William Carey. Is Gilchrist comes into the front court with it. Gets it to shake Kibi. Kibi looking for help. Defended by Starwood. Strong Gets defense it. from William Carey. Was indeed, and that one's deflected out of bounds by Sean Moore. So it'll be Florida Memorial basketball in front of the William Carey bench. Inbound will come momentarily from Rodney Guillory. So many bodies hitting the floor this weekend. They have been busy keeping it dry. Aubrey Washington to Shake Kibi. Washington bounces it off TV and a shot Didn't clock violation. Great she hounding defense up top by Moore, keeping Florida Memorial from being able to get any kind of look as the shot clock wound down. Moore with it across the timeline, defended by Terrence Clayton. Looks for help, finds bumpers on the outlet to the left wing. He'll go around the defender and then a foul call. That's going to put William Carey back at the line. I think it's going to be Kibi. We'll see. Nope. Washington. They put it on Washington. That's his second. So, Savior and Bumpers to the line where he's already got eight points today. Free throw attempt 13 and 14 for William Carey so far in the half. First one is off back iron for Bumpers. Bumpers will look for another here. On the season, Bumpers averaging 8.2 points per game, two of eight from the free throw line to start the day. 17 point advantage right now for William Carey. Into the corner, Clayton. Three, no, rebound underneath, Kazaniza hands that one off. Turning the corner is Moore. All the way up, right-hand floater won't go. Shake Kibi changed that shot. And a whistle. 
going to be on Moore. And that rebound on this end for William Carey to Kazinzia, that was his seventh already here on the afternoon. Ball thrown in to Gilchrist and then right back into the hand of Murad Berrien. Berrien defended by Moore, works to the right. Gets it over to Clayton. Clayton attacks right, over, out. Stevens pulls it back near the elbow, 10 to shoot. Finds Gilchrist, drives, kicks. Kiwi shoots, good from three. 44-30 is your score. 2-10 remaining in the half. Kiwi dropped four of those yesterday against Faulkner. Something he hasn't shot a lot of coming into the, this weekend. He's extending that range and showing it here this weekend, though. Starwood draws the foul. That'll be on Kiwi. That's two on Shake Kiwi. So Starwood back to the line. Ten points, two rebounds already for Maxwell Starwood. He is the only player in double figures at the moment for William Carey. Mubashir Ali has the game high at 11. Actually, I apologize. Jonathan Floyd is also at 11 for William Carey. Starwood hits the first, misses the second, 15-point lead. Murad Berrien with it across the timeline. Looking for help. Drives, left hand layup, good. 45-32 is the score. That was a smart play by a boy again for Florida Memorial. He was on the post, went up to the top of the key and allowed the lane for, for him to come in on, that, on, the, on the layup attempt. Whitworth. Picked up his dribble as he looked back at the coach, and now timeout taken by Steve Knight with 1.27 to go in the half and a 13-point lead. I believe it's the 30-second variety, is it not? I think that's what they signaled. So we'll keep it here. Start to look at some of these numbers as they we get a little more of a sample size underneath us here. 18-12, William Carey leading the rebound battle. Bench scoring as expected Florida Memorial because they run a lot of guys off. They're up 14 to one there. But big moment in, or big thing in the game, 12 to two on second chance buckets for William Carey, helped out by six offensive rebounds. So we'll see what William Carey comes out of the huddle with. William Carey really being active on the, on the offensive boards so far this afternoon and they've taken advantage of it getting a couple of easy opportunities throughout the course of this first half. Ball thrown into Whitworth. Works around to the right. Bounce pass to Floyd, top of the key. Fires, won't go. Kibi loses it in a fight with his own teammate. Now gets it over to Murad Berrien. Berrien drives. Looks for help, and a whistle. Going to get the reach on Bumpers. So Savion Bumpers will pick that one up. That'll be his second. They get that foul there, which was a, a foul, but on the other end, and that scrum for the basketball, Kazenzio was pulled down by the Florida Memorial player, and it was completely missed. Yeah, it's, it's early season for the refs, too. <laughs> Inbound for Gilchrist. And there's another foul. They're going to get that on Kazaniza. So seventh foul against William Carey. Will put Florida Memorial up shooting one and one. Second foul on Emil Kazaniza. Shake Kiwi, 75% on the season through 12 attempts. Misses that one. Kazanis a rebound. Across the timeline, Whitworth. Starwood, three. Yes. Maxwell Starwood continues his strong start. 48-32 the lead. 14 points for him, two for two from downtown. 
Gets it over to Gilchrist. 18 second differential between shot clock and game clock right now. Gilchrist attacks. A lot of contact. Who are they going to put it on? I think it's going to be on. They're going the other way, so I guess it's going to be a Florida Memorial. Martin's head hit hard yeah, off the floor. Yeah, he did. So they'll tend to the floor again. That was Gilchrist that picked up that foul. His first. Two and a half second differential between shot clock and game clock. Whitworth crosses the timeline. Looks for help. He'll hold potentially for last shot here. Now he'll go around Clayton and Clayton recovers. Again, two and a half second differential between shot and game. Whitworth feeds it, two up. to shoot. Floyd's got to get it off and he won't. Shot clock goes off, one and a half remaining. So not a lot of opportunity for Florida Memorial here. I kept we, it. That was largely a defensive offensive possession. Yeah, it was. And I kept expecting the screen to come up for Whitworth to be able to take advantage of that one way or the other. It just never came. He kept calling it off. 48-32. The score right now. Two and a half seconds. They do reset the clock. They get it to Gilchrist. He's got a fire on target nearly. 48-32 is the score. William Carey with the lead. We're back in 15 minutes on the Faulkner Sports Network presentation of the Battle at the Beach. I would say the best thing about Faulkner is the family atmosphere because they always come out to all of our volleyball games and they came out this past season at Mobile and we swept them. Everyone here is so nice and I'm just so happy I get to be part of the Faulkner family. So some of my best memories at Faulkner happened while I was in my social club Phi Lambda. Uh, I luckily got to be in a leadership position and uh, it really helped me to make some of the best friends that I have in the world and I got to do a lot of things with student life and get involved and so uh, some of the best advice I can give is to go to everything, have a good time, find your people. One of the best things I love about Faulkner is the wholesome environment around campus when you first walk through those gates in the front you just feel the warm welcoming environment and just everybody loves Jesus and it's just perfect. <laughs> Um, Faulkner is a great place to grow academically and spiritually. I got an opportunity this summer to work at Maywood Christian Camp for a whole month and it was the most awesome opportunity that I've ever had. So Faulkner's the best. So we had this awesome time. Uh, SGA um, decided to kind of take all the students out uh, and go see Avengers Endgame in a movie theater and they rented out two whole movie theaters. Uh, just for students for Faulkner and we watched Endgame and we all laughed, we all cried. It was awesome, one of my favorite experiences and it was probably the best experience that I had. Um, my sophomore and junior years, or junior and senior, I can't remember, um, I was a mentor for the freshmen when they first came in and it was really an awesome opportunity to get to uh, meet new friends and really welcome in the new freshmen um, and it really helped me uh, grow in leadership and love Faulkner more. Jamboree, all the late nights just staying up with your friends and everything, just making awesome memories and the feeling of doing it and winning it is the best feeling ever. At Faulkner University, you can get your MS degree and your MRS degree. This one time this past semester, I was just kind of getting really overwhelmed with like classes and everything. And I had a professor come up to me and say like, hey, you know, is everything okay? And we just started talking and he helped me out so much and ended up praying over me. And it just made me feel so good. And just reassured like, why had I picked Faulkner?
Did you know that 100% of Faulkner's computer science graduates since 2014 have found jobs in their fields within six months of graduating? It's a great time to be a computer scientist. Everyone is walking around with a computer in their pocket in the form of a smartphone. And it takes software developers to make those things work. I built church websites and through the training and instruction that I received from Faulkner, I was able to go right into my career after graduation. It laid a solid foundation for what you need to know. I'm getting a lot of hands-on experience within my field and also they're just giving me a wide variety of options of things that I might want to pursue in the future. In the state of Alabama alone, there are over 4,000 tech-related jobs available. And the preparation that you receive at Faulkner University will allow you to go to work almost anywhere as a software developer. It's a great time to be a Faulkner Eagle, and it's a great time to be a computer scientist. I hope you'll come and join us. Hi, I'm Hannah Sager. As a three-time NAI All-American golfer, I've been lucky enough to play some of the best courses around. I can hardly think of any that are more challenging or more enjoyable than the three courses at Robert Trent Jones Capitol Hill in Prattville. Whether you're looking for a nice afternoon of golf with friends or you want to put your game to the test on the judge, RTJ Capitol Hill is great for every golfer. From the fairways to the greens to that majestic first tee box of the judge that overlooks the Alabama River with downtown Montgomery as the backdrop, RTJ Capitol Hill is what golf is all about. Being outside, enjoying the scenery, growing friendships, challenging yourself. Right now, you can save big on greens fees with the RTJ trail card. Purchase yours at rtjgolf.com backslash trail card or by going to the pro shop. Robert Trent Jones Golf Trail at Capitol Hill. There's always something to look forward to on the next hole. I don't know if there is anything I like better than good barbecue. Full Moon has the best barbecue and best smoked wings in town, and those onion rings are out of this world. Go buy after the game and use your ticket for a buy one get one free barbecue sandwich. Say hi to Chris in person at 7660 East Chase Parkway or give him a call at 334-676-5999.
ready to go. Second half of this one. William Carey leading Florida Memorial 30 or 48 32, rather. Final game for these two teams in the battle at the beach. Jeremy Smith alongside David Turner. David, you look at these halftime stats, and we noticed before we went into the break, 12-2 advantage on second chance points for William Carey. That, I think, is a big part of what's going on in this game. 19-13, they lead the rebounding battle. Not a lot of rebounds for either team because William Carey shot the lights out. They have. They've 57% from the floor. Shot the ball really well, and then they've gotten a lot of free throw opportunities. And there's Starwood misses that one. Rebound cleared by Mubashir Ali. Ali to Washington. Washington working right. Ali the leading scorer in that first half for the Lions, only playing just a little over seven minutes. And yeah. travels. Yeah, Ali's minutes haven't been big this tournament. But he's been pretty efficient, largely. 10 and 10 Friday night. Four and five last night. Whitworth into the front court. Working against Washington. Kazaniza against Ali. Hands it off, Floyd. Bumpers. 10 to shoot around the screen of Starwood. Down the baseline, up and under, and a foul call. Stepped on the end line, I think, is what they get. Yeah, yeah, stepped on the end line. That's fine. That's better than a foul call. So Washington across the timeline with it. Starwood was begging for the ball in the post there, and Bumpers wanted the screen, so that's what happened. Ali can't chase that down. Not a sequence he'd like to remember there. They'll call him for the travel, or they'll call William Carey William for the travel. William Carey for the travel. Sure. Now they signal a foul. No, they no, reset 20 the, on clock. the shot clock. I don't know what's going on right now. Because <laughs> I thought Ali was, traveled when he was yeah. trying to gather the ball. I did too. Which they didn't call, and then they didn't they, call a William, uh, William Carey travel. Uh, we'll see, Urbina. Looking for his first points of the day. He's been in double figures each of the first two games. Then if you're calling a travel on William Carey, why do you set the shot clock to 20? Yeah. Going the other way. Whitworth. Back up. Starwood. Looking for help. There's Whitworth. Attacks. Leaves it. Bumpers. Three. No. Tipped alive, Starwood's got it, sends it to Cazaniza. They're going to call timeout by the official, leave it at 20. Forty-eight thirty-two is the score. Ball thrown in by Cazaniza. That's Moore with it. Defended by Washington, finds Floyd. Goes around, kicks it over. Cazaniza rises up for three, won't go. Urbina takes the ball away from Starwood on the rebound. Throws it ahead to Mubashir Ali at the rim. Can't get it to go, and there's a whistle. Going to call that one on Floyd. Two on him. 17.45 to go in the ball game as Mubashir Ali goes to the line. 11 and five for him on the day. Timeout, William Carey. David Turner, a little bit of a disjointed start to the half here in terms of pace. Yeah, a lot of whistles, but it's been turnovers that have created those whistles travels and stepping on the end line and you know a player getting a little banged up and having to come out so both coaches probably going to use this opportunity to kind of re get their get their guys recollective and, and on their thoughts and, and kind of lay this thing back out and scrap the last 
two minutes and 15 seconds, and let's just start over. 48-32 is the score. 17-45 remaining. Mubashir Ali to shoot. 11 points, five rebounds for him. That one misses. Second one, forthcoming. Up, no good. 48, 32 is the score. Kazaniza gets it in, two more. Goes around. Washington now back over to Kazaniza. Kazaniza to Floyd. Floyd over to Moore. Dumps it to Starwood at the elbow. Nice pass down low, but they'll bat the ball around. Got to wonder, you're on your third game in three days and what is functionally still early in the year because of the amount of games that have been canceled or postponed. How much do you think legs have to do with the sloppiness coming out in the second half here? They've probably got a little bit to do with it this early in the season and, you know, just guys not used to playing like this. They're used to maybe a game, a few days off in between, and, and coaches trying to rest legs and those kind of things while they're still doing walkthroughs and, and having some light practices. But uh, you're not used to going out there and going up for 40 minutes, three straight days. Bumpers came across to get the block on Mubashir Ali. It'll stay with Florida Memorial. Urbina will throw it in. Shake Kibi. Throws it down. Ball is deflected and a foul call on Starwood. It's two on him, two on the team. Make way for the whistle parade. That is what we have here in the second half. Now we have to wipe down the basketball. Seems like the majority of the games have second half, the whistles have really come out and shown themselves. Yeah, indeed they have. Ball thrown in, Washington tips it up, won't go. Floyd rebound. Coming the other way with it. Floyd, left side, Moore attacks it. Right hand won't go. And another whistle as it goes out of bounds again. It'll stay with William Carey. 16.53 remaining in the game. That's a good, at this rate, a good hour and 45 minutes. Ball thrown into Kazaniza. There's Moore. Back over to Floyd. Ali with the steal, gets it over. And the run out now by Mack. Mack Urbina, Urbina, up left hand, good. He's on the board. I think just based on the way that he's built, how athletic he is and how intense he plays both ends, Urbina could become the best player on this team. I would agree with that. I would agree with that. The way that he can really lock down and his intensity defensively. Big enough to be able to play it. Several positions, yeah. Yeah, yeah really. In, in the world of positionless basketball, he's the kind of guy you, you like to have. Washington gets that down in the corner and deflected out of bounds by Kazaniza. Or being listed at 6'7", a junior out of Los Angeles, California. And because the NAI has functionally granted the year back for everybody. Florida Memorial could have him for three years, including this one. Washington to the left. Looks for help. Bounce pass over. Going to work is Mack. Up and in. Mack has announced himself a little bit here in the second half, getting Getting his shot, that gives him seven. That was just a nice play by Mack. They tried to pull the seat out from under him. He kept his balance and went right onto the other side of the basket. 
There's the drive, bumpers, can't get it to drop. Mubash Ali clears the board, outlet pass to Washington, all the way up, right hand won't go, Kazanese of the rebound. Looking for help, gets it out to Floyd. Floyd, across the timeline. Got a screen either way, he'll take the one from Kazaniza and go downhill and there's a foul call on Kazaniza. That's three on Emil Kazaniza. William Carey will take that time out. Did you see the signal if it was a full or a 30? I did not. I was waiting for the live stats to upload to make yeah. sure I was writing about what I was about to say and missed it. But that is now 10 rebounds here on the afternoon. That's what I was waiting for, for Kazaniza. Florida Memorial, meanwhile, is making a run. They've cut it to 12. And they'll try to cut it a little more coming out of this timeout. So a good timeout taken by William Carey here. Good timeout. Florida Memorial's taking away some of those easy looks that William Carey was getting in that first half. They're just doing a little bit better job of being more disciplined defensively. And then they're taking better care of the basketball, getting better looks themselves. 15.08 remaining. Aubrey Washington with the basketball. Crosses the timeline, defended by Moore. Bounce pass over to Urbina. Urbina turns, floats it up, won't go. Tipped out of bounds off of Javari Thigpen. So Florida Memorial will retain possession with a fresh 20 on the shot clock. 14.50 remaining. Urbina will trigger the inbound. Stevens on the floor now for Florida Memorial along with Shake Kibi. That one deflected, will stay with Florida Memorial again. I want you to take a look at the height on the floor right now. Tristan Stevens listed at 6'4", Urbina at 6'7", Ali at seven foot, and Kibi at six foot nine. Aubrey Washington at 5'10 is the point guard. So they've got length all over the floor. Never mind. They just pulled their Bina off. And, <laughs> and go to 6'4 Sam Mack. Yeah. They'll throw the ball into Ali. Ali goes to the basket. Won't go. Out of bounds. Stays <laughs> with Florida Memorial again. The possession that just won't end. Yeah. Offensive team rebounds are getting this a little even here. They don't get a second chance bucket off this. I don't know if they'll ever get one. <laughs> Into Mubashar Ali. There's Shake Kibi. Loses the ball. Still fighting. Kibi looking for help. Sends it to Ali. Now stolen. And I think we're going to come to the other end now. <laughs> There's there Floyd. It is. Back over to Thigpen. Thought about it. Found Floyd. He didn't have to think about it. Straight through. And he just yelled over at Thigpen and said, shoot the ball. <laughs> so he'll take the three points. Thigpen will take the assist. But Floyd says, take the shot when you got it. 51-36 with 14 minutes to play. The drive. Thigpen. <laughs> he just a soul-snatching block. <laughs> oh, my. Right out of his and his Mac okay? That's the question. He is still down the other end. Is Mac okay? As Starwood hits the bucket on this end. While they check on Mac, we'll pause Faulkner Sports Network.
53-36 is the score. William Carey with the lead. Florida Memorial with the ball. Terrence Clayton handling point guard duties. He'll cross the timeline, bounce it to Stevens. He'll lose it. Coming the other way is Kazaniza. Finds Whitworth. Up, right hand won't go. And a foul. Fifty-three thirty-six is your score. Thirteen thirty-three remaining. Whitworth will go to the line. Good day for him so far. Eight points, three rebounds, five assists. That one up and good. Fifty-four thirty-six as Whitworth looks for another. That is Gilchrist who clears the board. Stevens kicks it. Back over left wing. Now up to Urbina. Euro step feeds and travel. And a boy gay can't get it to go. And Stevens, as he was going baseline, had the layup, gave it up to kick it out to the wing. Cross the timeline, Whitworth, and he loses it. And there's a backcourt violation. Whitworth knew it. So I was just going to let it go. You got to go get those, at least let your defense set up on the other side. Yeah. 13.07 to go. Now zone look here from William Carey, a 3-2. Nice pass inside to split it. Working on the block, deflected by bumpers. That's a travel. But a lot of that today. That now the 24th turnover in the game. It feels like it's really increased here in the second half. Yeah, it definitely has. Again, long weekend for these teams. Three games in three days. That's the intensity of this event. The pressure ratcheted down only slightly by the fact that there's no draw play, no tournament play in this one as there was last year. In a normal year for this event, as there's a foul on the floor, going to be called on Clayton. In a normal year for this event, you'll have eight teams, each guaranteed three games, but it is bracket-style play with a winner to be declared, ending with a championship game on Sunday. Kazaniza, left wing. Floyd goes around the defender, floats it, won't drop. Tip in good by Javari Thigpen. Good job for Thigpen, just really bullying his way through the traffic, tipping it up and in for those second chance points. 56-36, 20 point lead for Carey. Rebound by Floyd. He'll bring it across the timeline himself. Feed, looking for help, back over. Looks to turn the corner. Whitworth content to dribble some clock out. The next stoppage will be the under 12 media timeout. Up, looks for help, finds Kazaniza, got to get it off. Gets it out of his hand barely. Shot clock violation. And that's the under 12 media timeout. 56-36, William Carey leads, 11-36 to play in the game. Faulkner Sports Network. I don't know if there is anything I like better than good barbecue. Full Moon has the best barbecue and best smoked wings in town, and those onion rings are out of this world. Go buy after the game and use your ticket for a buy one, get one free barbecue sandwich. Say hi to Chris in person at 7660 East Chase Parkway, or give him a call at 334-676-5999.
56-36, 11-36 to play in this one. 28-21, William Carey leads the rebounding battle. Shooting percentages have come down a little bit. They're not a ton. Still shooting 48.7% from the floor, 50% from three. Into the front court. Clayton to Kibi. Now back to Urbina. Work right. Drives, kicks, Gilchrist three. Good. Muhammad Gilchrist on the board for the first time today. Cuts it to 17, and David, they're flashing the press they showed against Faulkner late in yesterday's game. Yeah, and that gave the Eagles a lot of trouble. We got a steal here. Drive, layup won't go, Urbina rebound, put back, good. Quincy Urbina. He's got four. Kazaniza. They'll keep it with William Carey here. And in situations like this, with this little press that Florida Memorial's jumped into, that their length really gives you a lot of problems. You've got... Shake Kibi in there. He's playing essentially the five, so he's six nine. Urbina is, is essentially your three. He's six seven, so that length is, can really take a toll on you, and keeping a, the passing lanes blocked up for you. Yeah, and, and just in terms of watching their front court lineups and rotations, I kind of feel like the Urbina Kibi lineup is their most versatile in terms of being able to be physical and still be quick. And there's a foul. Yeah, they seem to provide the best of both worlds in a lot of situations for them. We're going to put that foul on Stevens, I think. So that's – no, they're making the adjustment. It's not Stevens because Stevens was not on the floor. They're going to put it on Urbina. So Urbina, how many is that on Urbina now? Board says three, but we'll look at the stats. It's three. All right, so three on Urbina. Sheikh Kiwi checks out. Mubashar Ali checks back in. 57-41 the score, 10-29 to play in this one. Emil Kazaniza steps back to the line. 16-point advantage for William Carey. That shot up and good. Seventeen point lead. Urbina will inbound the ball. I think that's now eight points, eleven rebounds for Casaniza. Good game again for him. There's the pass, right hand layup, and one for Mubashar Ali. No shot. No, no, no shot. shot. It's gonna okay. be on the floor. On the floor. So they'll wave that one off. Fouls on Thigpen. Urbina will throw it in to Mubashar Ali. Right wing three. Bradley can't get it to go. Gilchrist rebound and then fouled hard by Savion Bumpers. So Bumpers. His third foul. Put Gilchrist on the line. Gilchrist, a native of College Park, Maryland. Free throw forthcoming. That one's good. Hadn't played a ton of minutes early this year, averaging only 7.6 minutes a game. Was averaging less than a point per game coming into today. He's now got, I believe, four. Yeah, four and now five. Now five points on the day. There's Whit Whitworth with it. Floyd. Nice pass. Starwood. No no go on that, and they get tangled up. They're going to call Starwood for the foul. 
three on Starwood. 10 minutes remaining. Encourage you to follow at Battle at the Beach on Twitter. Find the official Twitter account of this event after the conclusion of the, the festivities today. We will be announcing the all-tournament team following the conclusion of the third game. We will announce the all-tournament team on the Battle at the Beach Twitter account. There will be two representatives from each team on that all-tournament team, including the announcement of the MVP, which will also take place at Battle at the Beach on Twitter. 58-44 the score right now. Terrence Clayton's next free throw up and good. Cut it to 13 with 9.50 to play. Throws it over. Thick pin. Up ahead. Martin. Whitworth. Florida Memorial swarming a little bit on D right now. Letting their length really help them. Yeah, they are. Anytime you've got Urbina up top, Starwood's going to pull that three. Out of the corner, won't go. Rebound Gilchrist. Going the other way to Clayton. Throws it up. Mubashar Ali can't catch it. Coming the other way. Floyd. Euro step around. Finish with the right hand. Good. Floyd's double digit day increases. 16 for him now. Into the front court. Left. Urbina looks up. Blocked by Starwood and a foul. They'll get Starwood this four on him. It's going to be the only problem for Starwood this season, I think, is staying out of foul trouble. Yeah, he's been in foul trouble every game during over the course of this, this weekend. Urbina to the line. His day, four points, two rebounds and an assist so far. That one up and good. Urbina right around 57% on the free throw line coming into this ball game. Next free throw. Up, rattles around, rebound underneath by Thigpen. 14-point advantage for the Crusaders as they work against the press of Florida Memorial. Into the corner, tip back up, Whitworth gathers. Sends it over. Bounce pass to Whitworth, goes around two defenders and a foul. <clears throat> Gilchrist with the foul. And that's the tough thing about that that defense that Florida Memorial has out there. If you keep swinging it side to side, you're giving them opportunities to come up and trap. If you can get it into that free throw line area, split those those two defenders, you make your, make it a lot easier for you. Kazaniza misses that layup attempt off the inbound pass. Into the front court goes Washington. There's the attack through, right hand won't go. Rebound taken down by Ali and put back good. He's got 13 and seven. Whitworth throws it up. And a timeout taken by Steve Knight, who has seen enough. 8.04 to go in the game, his team up 12. Trying to hang on and keep Florida Memorial at bay, not let him get in striking distance. We'll take the timeout with him, Partner Sports Network.
60 to 48. The score, Florida Memorial trying to climb out of this hole against William Carey. Ball thrown in. Back over. Floyd into the corner. Whitworth called for the travel. The turnovers really piling up. That's 27 total turnovers right now in the game. I feel like most of them have come in the second half. There's the attack from Bradley. Gets it to go. That'll cut it to 10. That's as close as the Lions have been for quite some time. Bounce pass over to Floyd. Looks for help. Whitworth, three, count it. Dejon Whitworth. 12 points for him now. Bradley, Ali, Ali goes to work. Back over to Mack. Mack drives, kicks, and a foul. So we'll see officially who they put it on. Officially on Mack, his third. Figured it had to be, but. You never know. Never know. We've learned this weekend never to assume. Ball thrown into Whitworth, gets it back over to Floyd. Middle Much of the floor, better. Kazaniza. Yeah, that's a good Much press better break. Much getting, better getting through that press. Big pin can't finish it. Kazaniza rebound, has it knocked away. Gilchrist comes out of there with it. And a trip. They're going to get Floyd with that one. And the difference was on that press break, they passed a lot quicker. No yeah. dribbles. You get it in, pass across, and pass right back to the middle. You shoot that guy to the middle of the floor, and you're, you're where you need to be at that point. Well, and with the length of Kazanese and the way yeah. he runs the floor, he's the perfect guy for that. He is, and he, he can handle the ball a little bit, just enough to get you in into the front court, get the ball back to the point guard, settle things back down, and get into the offense. 63-50 the score. Muhammad Gilchrist to the line. Free throw up and good from Muhammad Gilchrist. That's going to give him six points to go along with four rebounds and an assist today. And second free throw rattles off. Kazaniza the rebound. His 13th board of the day. Throws it ahead. There's Whitworth. Whitworth up. And a foul call. Blocking foul called against Florida Memorial. That called on Washington, his third. T.J. Boykin tends to the lane again. 6.50 remaining in this one. 12-point lead for the Crusaders as Dejon Whitworth steps to the line. 12 points for him so far today. Gulfport native makes that one. Give him 13. Again, he's the leading scorer by average on this team. 15 points a game. He's right at that today with 14. Into the front court. Hands it off. Back around. Ali, three, no good. Aubrey Washington with a rebound. A lot of contact, no call there. It goes off Washington. Kazaniza will throw it in. Allows the Lions to set this press up, though. Whitworth across the timeline. Bounce pass to Thigpen. There's Whitworth. He's trapped there, dribbles out of it, pulls it from the elbow, and puts it through. Whitworth. 
He's been really good all weekend long. Good trap on the baseline. And they'll say he stepped, stepped out, of, out of bounds or kicked at one. 67-51. Bumpers and Thigpen both saw blood on that one, and they just went right after that trap. Next stoppage will be the under six media timeout. He'll go around across the timeline. Will Martin, and there's a foul. That's a foul. They're going to put it on Washington. That'll be his fourth. That's the under six media timeout. 16-point lead for the Crusaders. This is the Faulkner Sports Network presentation of Battle at the Beach. Connections matter now more than ever. At Guardian Credit Union, we live to make connections, to provide hope, to strengthen our communities, to create stronger financial future. These connections happen in our credit union, in serving our communities, and even in the small moments of sharing a bench with a neighbor. Connect to your goals. Connect to your community. Connect with Guardian. Five fifty-four to go in this one. David Turner sends the adjustment to the press by William Carey. That really has settled things back down for them. It has. They've done a much better job last several possessions breaking that press and then finding easy buckets off of it. Once you beat those top three men up top and you get that rotation, you can find an easy basket off of that. Sarkeesius Martin, free throw up. Second one forthcoming. Misses that one. And rebound in the hand of Shake Keeby. Now gets it over to Clayton. Clayton, contact and another foul call. And one. Fifty-three sixty-eight is your score. So Clayton will go to the free throw line for two more where he's already two for two on the afternoon with five points. Missed the first game of this weekend. Just played last night and tonight. That one's good. 68-54 is your score. Throws it over. And they'll say he stepped out of bounds or he stepped over the timeline. I thought he was straddling it when he, when he yeah, landed. Yeah, he was straddling it when he landed. So back to a 14-point game. Here comes Starwood and Floyd. There goes Martin and Thigpen. Ball thrown in. Now Urbina in the backcourt. He'll move left with it. Split two defenders go in, left-hand layup, good. Good quick move by Urbina. Gives him seven. Floyd gets fouled by Urbina. It's four on him. Kazenza's playing him a little too hard to that offhand, and Urbina takes advantage of it, goes right around him, beats the, the defense before it rotates. So Floyd will go back to the line, 16 points for him on the day. Free throw up and good from Floyd. Seventeen points for Floyd on the afternoon. And he makes that one.
start looking at all tournament candidates for William Carey, you got several names you got to look at. Maxwell Starwood, Dejon Whitworth, Emil Cazaniza, and Jonathan Floyd have all made good cases this weekend. Clayton, three, no good. Starwood with the rebound. Throws it up to Floyd. Bounce pass over to Whitworth. Kicked around, Floyd comes up with it. Back over to Bumpers. There's Whitworth again. Backs it out, 12 to shoot. Now inside 10. And a foul called on Clayton. That's going to be three on Clayton. Whitworth to the line for one and one. 16 points for him today. Whitworth to the free throw line again where he's just about made a living here this afternoon. He has indeed. First one up, no good. That was his ninth attempt of the day. Urbina across the timeline, defended by Cazaniza, picked clean by Cazaniza. Throws it ahead to Whitworth. Up, right hand, Urbina blocks it. Shake Keeby the other way. Right hand won't drop, rebound Cazaniza. Gets it to bumpers. Now to Floyd. Floyd back over to Bumpers. Bumpers to Whitworth. Bounce pass over and a foul call. Going to put it on Shake Keeby. Keeby, that is his third. Thirty-nine. They make that now forty fouls called in this game. Over the course of the weekend, we've got to see some kind of record for the number of whistles. It is, yeah. It's it's been a lot, as we talked about. Just in the two Faulkner games, there have been ninety-seven foul calls, and some of that is early season. Refs are going to call things a little tighter, and then. For sure hopefully take the reins off a little bit as the season progresses. Bumpers will step back to the line. Up. Good on both of those. So Bumpers in double figures now with 11. 16-point lead. Ali. Up. Right hand won't go. Rebound kicked around. Cazaniza with another one. Get it over to Floyd. Back to Cazaniza. There's Bumpers. Steps back. Looks for help. Up. And Starwood. Good take down the baseline yeah. there. Nice take. Ali didn't take the, the baseline away from him, so he goes right by him and around to the rim. Working right. Up. Right hand. And a blocking foul called on bumpers. That's four on bumpers. As we await another free throw attempt from Mack. Sam Mack, seven points. Keep him there for a moment. And William Carey will take the timeout with 3.20 to go. We'll pause. 74-56, 3.20 remaining. Faulkner Sports Network. P Automotive is family owned and in the same location since 1985. We strive to be your one-stop shop for all your auto needs. You don't have to spend big money for a nice car. Our prices start at $3,995. We have several lenders and in-house financing available. 
visit us online at anpautomotive.com. Seventy-four fifty-six is your score. Mack to the line. Hits that one. Seventy-four fifty-seven. Andrew Drugan checks in for the Lions. Starwood. Gets it to Moore. Moore. Looks for help, finds bumpers across the timeline. He's flirting with that half court line. Got to get it out of there. There's Cazaniza all the way up and a foul. So Emil Cazaniza will go to the line. Seven points, 13 rebounds for him on the day. That is the 24th foul called against Florida Memorial today. Thirty second total in the game. Cazanese's free throw. Up and good. Really good tournament for him. He had ten points, seven rebounds, and three assists against Thomas. Seven points, seven rebounds, and assist against Kaiser. Tonight now. Nine points, 13 rebounds. The drive, the kick, up and good for Aboagi. I think I've said his name about every way it could be pronounced because I still don't know the pronunciation. Yeah. Moore across the timeline all the way, floats it up. Starwood, tip in, won't drop. A Boagie, there's another pronunciation, rebounds that one. And out of bounds is Bradley as he steps on the line on the catch. Bounce pass across, that's Floyd. Goes around, throws it ahead to Starwood. Starwood to Floyd. Timeout taken by Floyd. They'll take, I think they're going a full. They are. We'll take it with them. 225 to go. 7659 Faulkner Sports Network. Seventy six fifty nine is your score. Working to the left, gets it back over. Bumpers has a screen, 
takes it. Starwood, nope, into the corner. That's Cazaniza. He'll adjust, won't get it to go. Floyd with the rebound. It's his fifth board today. He'll drive. Now back out. He's running some clock here, 10 to shoot. Moore with it. Goes right, shoots it. Rebound cleared. Florida Memorial going the other way. It's Berrien. Up. Abawagi gets that to go. Four for him. Kazanese in the corner to Starwood, back up top. Now Floyd, left wing. 15 to shoot, 120 to play, and he'll pick up the foul. Berrien commits it. It's two on him. Finally starting to spread this defense out a little bit, keep them from having the easy ability to come and trap. Jonathan Floyd to the line. Free throw up. No good for Jonathan Floyd. Second one forthcoming. That one no good. Rebound tipped alive. Florida Memorial comes out with it. There's Berrien. Runs ahead. Drives into the contact. The bumper's no call. Gets the shot to go. Nice job by Barry in there. Cuts it to 13. And they got to get it out of there. Across the timeline goes Bumpers. Back over. He'll dribble around the defender. Back across again. Five to shoot. Pulls the three, won't go. Rebound, Kazaniza, and he's fouled. So Emil Kazaniza, 10 and 13 on, or nine and 13 on the day for him as he steps to the line. Looking for a double-double. If he can make one of two, he'll have it. First one's up and good. So Emil Kazaniza with a double-double, 10 points, 13 rebounds. Second free throw. Good. 15-point advantage for William Carey. Working left, back right, picked clean by Floyd, throws it ahead to Moore. Lay up or dunks it. And that's a 17-point lead. Give the assist to Floyd. Second of the day. Into the corner. Bradley down the baseline. Blocked and a foul by Starwood. That'll be five on him. So Starwood will check out. Zarkeishis Martin into the game. Why in that situation you, you do that foul? Not sure. Up doubled figures. Seven. Starwood ends with 18 points and four rebounds. To the line goes Bradley. Hits that one. So Bradley now five points. 17.3 remaining in the game. Only player in double figures for Florida Memorial is Mubashir Ali with 13. Bradley now at six. Floyd across the timeline. Defended by Guillory. He'll throw it ahead. Bumpers. Thought about it. Steve Knight walked over and told him, don't shoot it. 80 to 65 is the final score in this one. 80 to 65. 
William Carey puts away Florida Memorial, an 0-3 weekend for the Lions. Crusaders ended at 2-1. David Turner, you look at the field, the field goal percentage just came back down to earth a little bit, but really not that much for William Carey. Identical yeah. from the floor for both teams, 24-55, 43.64%. Your real difference is from three, 47% from three for the Crusaders, 26% from three for the Lions. Exact same amount of, temp, of attempts, right. 19. Then you get to the free throw line, there's an 11-point differential there. A huge so. disparity in, in shot opportunities taken at the free throw line. 33 for William Carey, 18 for, for Florida Memorial. So a lot of extra points came from that free throw line, especially from that second half when so many fouls called. Your points off turnover are exactly the same. William Carey wins the second chance point battle plus 10, plus 8 for Florida Memorial in the points in the paint, and plus 29 in bench scoring. But in the end, William Carey able to get it done today. You look at individual leaders. We noted Mubashar Ali, 13 points, 8 rebounds, is the only guy in double figures for Florida Memorial. You look over at William Carey, and there's four or five guys in double figures. Emil Cazaniza, 11 points, 14 rebounds. Savion Bumpers, 11 points. 16 points, three rebounds, five assists for Dejon Whitworth. 18 points, five rebounds, two assists for Jonathan Floyd. 18 points, four rebounds for Maxwell Starwood. So if you're the Crusaders, the weekend didn't start the way you wanted. The loss to Kaiser in a good one. But a nice rebound here, wins over Thomas at Florida Memorial. Yeah, two quality opponents that you can feel good going back back home and getting ready for the remainder of your season, wrapping up, beginning the, to wrap up this out-of-conference season and bringing in the conference play here at the start of the new year. And that'll wrap us up here. Final score from this one, 80-65, to William Carey over Florida Memorial. We'll be back here in about 25 minutes with Kaiser versus Faulkner, the final game of the weekend. For Deshaun Bullock, for Yasmin Breckenridge, Jacob Hartsfield, for Buddy Bagsby and David Turner, I am Jeremy Smith. This has been the Faulkner Sports.